Alright, so we're taking the primer off first. I just replaced the primer too. I also put on new fuel lines. I actually just bought one of them cheapo kits. They work pretty good. Just make sure you have the right parts in it. I'm going to give you a little tool to fish out the line, which I have a tendency to keep because it helps out other times than trying to reach down there with the needle nose pliers. This comes off like that. And then this also removes the top of the carburetor here. As you can see, there looks like almost looks like jelly in there. I had this thing running for a while wasn't running right and it started to run a little better but I just couldn't get it to idle so uh, this diaphragm here looks good tabs aren't really bent back uh, this one looks like a hair but that'll that's not bad at all so uh, since I don't have a rebuild kit for this carburetor I won't redo that uh, but I will give it a nice cleaning and see if that does the difference and if not well then I'm willing to take it apart again and rebuild it uh, this car wasn't hard to get off some are a little bit difficult to get off and a lot of times you just got to keep trying with them. Let me move some of the stuff out of the way that don't need to be here. It's kind of a mess right now. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking off the bottom plate. This is the metering diaphragm. Uh, this is a Zama carburetor. You can see there's some crap in there. Uh, we'll blow everything out. If you look at the diaphragm here, there's a gasket here, and then there's a diaphragm on the opposite side. To remove the diaphragm and separate them, you have to kind of get pretty close to them. Sometimes they come apart right away. But we're going to pull, we're going to keep the gasket. I have some other diaphragms that should fit, uh, but I'm not 100% sure yet. That diaphragm doesn't look bad though, so. I got these, they're for Walbro carburetors, but if the holes line up and the tab is the same size, you can use them. So, one thing I did notice difference is just the little nipple-like thing is a different size. So, usually sometimes you can grind them down to be about the same height as this one, but I don't even go there. So, what I'm going to just do is clean this out. This diaphragm's like brand new looking. I didn't have that much use on it. So what I'm going to just do is clean it out. Now there's a few tricks about actually cleaning these carburetors. Uh, I know some people actually told me tips on boiling them. Uh, that works, I guess helps get down inside there uh, but there's certain chemicals you can soak them in like there's it's like chemix and stuff whatever you look uh, you can get some carburetor and choke cleaner uh, the stuff filled with cans at your hardware store your local hardware store and uh, I'm right now I'm pulling out the needles uh, don't forget which one goes where because you can if you try to put the wrong needle in the wrong spot, it'll either not go in or you can do damage. And what I'm going to do after I get these needles out, I also noticed that this plate, this whole plastic thing's coming off. I already removed the limiter cap so I can tune it, and I just dropped something there. But what I'm, I might do is I might just keep those off, and I may put springs on here. But then again, I don't know. So, I'll have to find that tiny little washer that... But other than that, make sure the needles are clean. And uh, if you want to, you can also remove the side, the inner, the needle. Just be careful not to uh, to bend that tab there, because they're hard to get them back accurate enough that they'll run at 100%. Screwdriver's got silk on it. Just hold that down like that. Just 
that and it comes out like that spring it's a very tiny spring and that and uh, this choke can also come off uh, the trick to getting these off is to actually you actually take the uh, take a really small screwdriver pull the plastic back a little bit and the tabs come out and you can get this whole plastic piece off I'm not going to bother with that really but if you're trying to switch a carburetor and you have the same carburetor just different mechanism on here because it varies with the models uh, well then you can just pull that out and you can insert the new uh, this mechanism for your new carburetor on if you're replacing the carburetor uh, hopefully I won't have to go that far so this carburetor doesn't look bad at all I mean it looks like there's some gel like stuff up in the top here uh, what I'm gonna just do is I'm also gonna remove this here that's just a little plastic one there that's good too it looks like a brand new rebuild kit was put in this carburetor almost so you know if the parts are physically looking perfect Sometimes it ain't really worth putting a rebuild kit in it, you know, there's something else wrong. I mean, you can try sometimes, but, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take these parts, we're going to, I'm going to stick them, I'm going to do the boiling method since I don't have any carb cleaner. It actually does work, it gets the dirt out, I did it with my golf cart carburetor, I did it with a bunch of other stuff, but you got to pull everything out, and it helps boil the dirt, uh, the gum and stuff out of them, and get them real clean, but, you use a little baking soda and stuff, there's all sorts of things that you could try. Uh, that will eat up fuel, fresh gas. Uh, I don't. I don't really re recommend that. Uh, but you know, brake cleaner. Well, eh, it helps, but it's not as good as the carb cleaner. Uh, so yeah. So that's what I'm gonna probably wind up doing is just boiling this carburetor and just get it all cleaned up. Wire, uh, not wire brush it, but nylon brush it down and stuff. Really get this all cleaned up. Make sure all the passageways are free. I'll blow them through with the compressed air and uh, once it's all clean we'll make the part 3 video